So now bring your legs out in front, point your feet, bring your fingertips towards where your knees are, and then lean back like you're rounding the back, tilting your pelvis under. So which tilt of the pelvis is this? This is posterior. Posterior tilt of the pelvis. You guys remember that from earlier in the series? Keep the pelvis tucked under, and then draw the right thigh bone into the socket. So grab hold of the right thigh bone and pull it in, and lift it up. One. Two, and just thinking about head of the femur drops down into the hip socket. And if the hamstrings are really tight, can they bend the knee? You can bend the knees, or just but then lift I it think less. it's actually better to lift it less okay. so that you can feel that movement back into the hip socket. One of the things that happens with the LSAT is that people will push the legs out <laughs> instead of pulling the legs in. And I think that's probably five. Let's go on down. <laughs> you keep talking, girl. <laughs> Let's try for the other side. Pull the belly in, round the back. And remember, do not kick out. It doesn't matter if you only lift it a little bit up, lift it a little bit up but let the direction be right. Thigh bone into the socket. Okay, and then higher, only when it feels right for you. One, avoid turning the leg out and instead really just keep it neutral. Two, three, calm, steady breathing. Four, almost there, and five. Exhale, come on down. Okay, <sighs> bend the knees. Yes. Hold on to the outsides of your feet. Oh boy, here we and go. And then slowly think about pulling the thigh bones into their sockets, into their sockets, into their socket, straighten the legs, ah. and good, stay. And so we're staying right here, draw the belly in, and then slowly when you're ready, begin to fold, fold, fold. All right, there's no folding for there's me. There's no folding there's for no you. There's no folding happening. Then what you wanna do is bend your knees and hold yourself in from here, and you can just stay balanced right like that. This good. is much better. Good, and then if you can straighten the legs, you can either just I can stay, the legs. then stay. Stay with the legs straight. And then one of the things that happens is that a lot of people will do this with force through the upper arms. So then we're gonna use this as applied core. So we're using the space between the ribs and the hips. I'll show you from the side. So if you use the space and you can either just hang out here or use the space between the ribs and the hips to fold your chest towards the thighs. So you think about this more like a sit-up and less like a flexibility pose. And that's the same whether your knees are bent or the legs are straight. Let's hold that for five. One, two, three. Calm, steady breathing. Four and five. Bend the knees, relax, cross your feet, take the, come down for a moment, shake it out. What's interesting is that when you approach a pose like the LSIP from two bit different perspectives, you isolate the applied core strength of keeping your chest close to your thighs in what looks like a flexibility pose. When you find the strength in that, then the LSIP automatically comes higher and higher and higher. So it might even be yeah. more fun this time. Yeah. Okay, let's do it one more time. Flex your feet and then exhale, fold forward and see if you can get the elbows down, bring your hands to where the elbows are, crown of the head to the toes, and really tuck under as much as you can, draw the belly in and start to slowly activate. And then inhale, send the hips back and up. One, two, point the feet if you can, three, almost there, four, and five, exhale down, and then let's cross the feet, bring them under, take the shoulders forward, nice, easy, let's step it back to plank. Inhale, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing, exhale, downward facing. Okay, how you doing? Pretty good. Did I kill you with the L-sits? Yeah, uh, the, you know, for me, it's the hamstrings really, really oh. hard for me. Well, the L-sits are hard for me. I was burning everywhere, so if I felt in the hamstrings, I'd be happy. <laughs> We're all different though. That's the great thing mm -hmm. about yoga. That's why it's not a competition. Mm. No. Everybody is made differently. Yeah, you just gotta work where you are. Let's look forward. Okay, walk forward, bring your knees together and your feet together, and then exhale, sit down. So now we did the L sit. Now we're gonna work on low lasana. Low lasana is like, I think like the world's hardest pose. It might be. It's just awful. Like, it's <laughs> awful. I mean, I would trade it if it weren't really, really helpful. <laughs> so Lolasana is gonna give you the strength to keep the thighs into the body, which is really helpful for like tuck handstands mm -hmm. and just really uh, activating and controlling through the core. Keep your feet on the ground to start off with and then think of it more like a Lolasana plank rather than trying to do Lolasana. So let's start off. Fingers behind the knees, shoulders forward, draw the belly in and make sure that the knees stay ahead of your wrists. If your hands are ahead of your knees, it won't be like low lasana. So you got to pull back and make sure your knees pass the plane of the wrist, move your shoulders forward, and then inhale, lift the knees. And we'll just hold it here for five. One, two, shoulders forward, hips back and up. Three, four, and five. Exhale down. 